hear us. The Lord be with you. Good morning for those of you who don't know me. My name is Ross Wilson. I'm the rector here at St John's Orange Field in East Belfast. And my name is Sonia Wilson. I'm one of the lay readers here. Together we want to welcome you to the short service of morning prayer, drawing from both the Church of Ireland and the Northumbria community. As we record this service, Sonia will be speaking out the responses, many of which we think may be familiar to you, and if so, we invite you to speak out those responses with her. Although we can't gather face to face for worship at this time, we can gather in spirit, and we do so in the presence of God's Holy Spirit, who is just as much with us, whether we're worshiping at home on our sofa, as he is when we meet in our church building here. So let's turn our hearts to his living presence now. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Christ, have mercy. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins. So we take a moment of silence together in preparation uh, before we confess those sins to God. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. So may Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, may he forgive us our sins open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Your word is a lantern to my feet. And a light upon our path. O Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm forever in the heavens. Let us then receive the word of the Lord. So may the light of your presence shine into our hearts. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, beginning at verse 23. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. When I bring them back from captivity, the people in the land of Judah and its towns will once again use these words. The Lord bless you, you prosperous city, you sacred mountain. People will live together in Judah and all its towns, Farmers and those who move about with their flocks. I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. At this I awoke and looked around. My sleep had been pleasant to me. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will plant the kingdoms of Israel and Judah with the offspring of people and of animals. Just as I watched over them to uproot and tear down and to overthrow destroy and bring disaster, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares the Lord. In those days, people will no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Instead, everyone will die for their own sin. Whoever eats sour grapes, their own teeth will be set on edge. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel 
and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbour or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 63. You, God, are my God, earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you, my whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Those who want to kill me will be destroyed. They will go down to the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword and become food for jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God will glory in him, while the mouths of liars will be silenced. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it, it was, was in, in the, the beginning, beginning is, is now, now and, and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you, richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. If you're a regular at our <coughs> Wednesday morning gatherings here at St John's, you'll know at this point we simply share a thought or two from one of our Bible readings. Currently, we're drawing from some of the key passages in the book of Jeremiah. Last week, we started looking at Jeremiah chapter 31, Words addressed to a people in exile, far from home and bereft of hope. And we heard how God reminded his people through the young prophet that despite the bleakness of what they were currently going through, God remained lovingly committed to them. We remembered that as we walk together through our own uncertain times, so nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now in today's reading, which is another section of the same message, we hear words of promise from the prophet Jeremiah, words about a new covenant and a renewed relationship between God and God's people. The covenant between God and Israel made so long ago at Sinai seems to be broken. God has not protected Israel from harm and they've been taken into exile by the Babylonians. And yet it is into this seemingly hopeless situation that the prophet speaks words of promise. And he frames those promises in terms of the very relationship which is in question. 
Listen to verse 31. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. We now understand that this new covenant was brought about in and through Jesus. I don't really have time to expand on this, but message or ask me in some other way for details if you want. But as Catherine Schitterfeder, a Luther writer, notes, in this new covenant, there is both continuity and discontinuity with what came before. The continuity lies in the character of God, the love God continues to have for his wayward people. God will not abandon them forever. He'll not forget his promises, no matter how long ago they were made at Sinai. This is why Jesus lived and died for us. Our faithful God of love keeps his promises. The discontinuity is implied by that we term new. God has made a new covenant with his people. Unlike the old covenant then, which was written on stone tablets that can be broken or scrolls that can be lost, this new covenant is now written within people on their very hearts. When we become Christians, God the Holy Spirit comes to live within us. And as we submit to him, he changes our desires and directs our lives God's way. With this in mind, consider the fact that we too are experiencing something of a sense of exile in this season of lockdown. Now, of course, it's nothing like being forced out of our own country into an alien land, which both the people of Israel in Jeremiah's day and many millions of refugees in our day have experienced. Nevertheless, we too are being forced to ask questions about what it means to live and worship as the people of God when we can't gather in the familiar ways. And as we work this out, we too need to be reminded of this new covenant promise. So today, bring to mind and then practice the truth that God's presence is not confined to a certain place or church building or indeed any other limitations which we place on him. In a recent blog, Paul Bradbury, who's a C of E uh, author, he asks the question, with our buildings shut and our public worship on hold, Will we too rediscover God's presence in surprising places? Without access to our St. John's buildings, will we remember that God dwells within each of us? Will we keep allowing God to direct our lives and desires even as we access his truth and community in unfamiliar ways? Will we also look for God's presence in our homes and within those we are locked down with? We are people of the new covenant. People of the way, as those early churchers were nicknamed. God is with us wherever and whenever we are. And God invites us to live all of life under his lordship. This time of exile provides us with a very rich opportunity to explore this together. Let's pray. Living God, thank you that we're partners in a new covenant with you. Thank you that your holy presence is within us and around us always everywhere. Open our eyes to you. Help us to partner with you in all that we are and all that we do. Amen. Let's affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his son Jesus Christ who redeemed mankind? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This, this is, is our, our faith. faith. We, we believe, believe and trust in one God, God Father, Father, Son and, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. We're going to have a short time of prayer now, particularly drawing from the Celtic Christian tradition. Circle me, Lord. Keep protection near and danger afar. Circle me, Lord. Keep hope within. Keep doubt without. Circle me, Lord. Keep light near and darkness afar. Circle me, Lord. Keep peace within. Keep evil out. Christ is a light, illumine and guide me. Christ is a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. 
Christ is a light. Christ is a shield. Christ beside me, on my left and my right. Amen. Gathering our prayers into one, we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So friends, may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining with us in worship today. We look forward to joining with you again in the coming week as we meet virtually through this Facebook page and the Zoom platform and as we connect with each other in different ways. Keep in touch and see you next time. God bless you and keep you.